Hello and welcome to all those in, in attendance for today's webinar. My name is Taylor and I am an analyst at Beyond 20. And today I'm joined by my colleagues, Amanda Fairbrother and David Crouch. Today's topic is on clearing the red tape, turning strategy into action in state and local governments. Um, to set the stage, um, our intention today is to explain how strategic planning and tactical execution are related, their challenges, and how both must be present to meet your IT goals. Having said that, please feel free to ask any questions uh, throughout the presentation in the chat box that you're, you've been provided. Before we jump in, I just wanna give you a little bit of background about Beyond 20. Uh, Beyond 20 is an IT consulting firm and we provide a wide range of IT uh, consulting services from idle assessments and training um, to even ITSM strategic planning, which is what we're diving into today. Um, so if you have any <coughs> questions about our strategic planning workshop, uh, feel free to give us a shout after today's presentation. We love to hear from you. So as I mentioned, uh, I'm joined by my colleagues, Amanda and David today. Amanda and David are both senior advisors here at Beyond 20. Um, and Amanda is also an idle expert and has been working in the government and ITSM for a very long time. Um, and she's also a new mom. She has a, the cutest little boy. <laughs> David also uh, is an idle expert as well and has some other great certifications. He uh, came to us from Johns Hopkins University and Hospital where he was a senior IT leader um, for many, many years. Um, he's also a proud member of the Cloud Appreciation Society and he can dive in a little bit more about what that means. <laughs> yeah, so these are these are real clouds that we're talking about with the Cloud Appreciation Society. So um, it's an organization in the UK that uh, that teaches people about cloud science and also uses that as a metaphor for creating some uh, time in our lives to be creative and imaginative. Just imagine like a kid laying back on the hill, imagining shapes of computers in the clouds. Okay, maybe not computers, but hello, everybody. you get the idea. <laughs> Um, so we'll go ahead and dive into um, the agenda for today's webinar. So today we're going to talk about, um, you know, some of the differences between strategy and execution and why you really need to do both of them. Um, then we will we will talk about the seven, I, I like to call them the seven pillars of strategic doing. Here are the seven big things that you really, really need to do to make sure that you are doing uh, a good job of strategy and, and getting what, what your plans are done. Um, we'll talk about each of the steps of that, um, and then we will we will end it up with some helpful tools, tools that we really find helpful in our consulting practice and getting people better at doing strategy, and then some uh, tips and tricks to doing better strategic uh, planning. And then finally, we'll end this with any uh, with any questions that you have. So as you go along, um, please jot down anything that uh, any questions that you have about how we can help you with this, or just general questions about strategic planning and implementation. And with that, let's go ahead and, and get started. All right. So first we're gonna talk about, well, as the slide says, strategy and execution. And the idea here is you really, you need to have both. You need to do some kind of strategic planning along with your, your everyday execution uh, in order to be truly successful. If you do strategic planning without tying it to your execution, you're gonna fall short. So the idea, the idea here is without strategic planning, we're just running and running and running. <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, this is one of the most common things that I've seen with any sort of organization, whether it's government, nonprofits, corporations that, uh, there are a lot of people who get fed up with planning. They say, why should we spend all of this time doing strategic planning? You can go to Harvard Business Review. You could probably find dozens of articles that, that say that strategic planning isn't worth the time or the effort. But if you don't do any planning, you end up being Forrest Gump here, right? Mm -hmm. you, you end up running, you get somewhere, but it might not be exactly where you want to go. A mistake that I think some people may fall into is using doing strategic planning just to check a box if you are doing strategic planning exercises 
just for compliance purposes, how to take those one step further and really integrate it into your operations. Yeah, so that's um, that's something that we that we see a lot. You, 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 an organization goes out, maybe they do this internally, or they go out and they hire a really big, well-known consulting firm, and mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, the consulting firm gives them this big tome, the the Oxford English English Dictionary of Strategic <laughs> Plan Plan Recommendations. You know, a hundred recommendations full of a lot of glossy glossy slides. It looks really pretty. It looks really great. But at the end of the day, a lot of those plans end up sitting on the shelf and getting dust and nobody ends up doing them. Uh, part of that is because if they have any recommendations in them at all, those recommendations are not matched up with the capabilities of the organization to actually get those things done. Sometimes they're just way too many recommendations. Sometimes they're not prioritized. But for any number of reasons, um, you know, we often see that there's a big gulf between what we, what we think we'd like to do, what we the right direction to go in, but actually getting it done. Yeah. So the question is, how do you fill that gap? We like to fill that gap with something that we call an implementation roadmap. The implementation roadmap is really meant to go along with the strategic plan and even to be created in conjunction with the strategic plan so that you, um, your tactical staff, your operations staff will have something that you can give them so they'll know how to stay, they'll know how, how they can play a part in accomplishing your plan. How many times do you see organizations where the, the C-suite folks, the executives go into the room, the smoke-filled room, I guess it's not smoke-filled anymore, <laughs> but they go somewhere and they do a lot of planning and then, and then suddenly a big report comes out with a lot of glossies, they email it out to hundreds of employees and then, you know, and guess what? How many people do you really think read those plans? Lucky if you'd get a, a handful, I'd say. Yeah, not too many. And it's not that we shouldn't do those reports. We should still probably do them. But the notion is, uh, you know, people say, how is this relevant to me? How does this change or affect the way I work on a day-to-day -day basis? That's where a really good implementation roadmap comes into play. It's kind of like it's, it's that bridge between your high-level strategic plan and then your project management plans where you're getting down to the nitty-gritty task of getting it done. I would say that that's for many organizations where the, where the implementation roadmap comes in. You know, ask simple questions like, based on the strategic plan, let's say it's a three-year plan, what can I do tomorrow? Like, what are the quick wins that I could do tomorrow? What about in the near term, the next six months or so, and, and one year and beyond? And that time frame may be different for your organization, but, um, but, but that's the idea of the implementation roadmap, more tactical in orientation, more get it done in orientation. Um, and then the time frame is probably, probably much shorter in terms of the time frame. And then to talk a little bit about um, some of the, the hurdles you may have to, to jump over in, uh, in a state and local government, <coughs> environment, although they're probably not really that dissimilar to the challenges that everyone has to face. Yeah, I mean, what, you know, of course, what we've seen is that, like you said, that strategic planning at some level, or or as I like to call it, strategic doing, at some <laughs> level, just about every organization goes through some of the same challenges, and, and some of the same generic solutions will help everybody. But what we see in municipal and in, in government, municipal government, statewide governments, we basically see two flavors of this, if you want to put it into two categories, and it depends on where you sit. So if you are, if you're at the top level, if you're the mayor, or the city manager, um, senior leaders, you know, city council, senior leaders within a city or the state. At that level, what you have to be concerned about is this. You have to be concerned that we have all of these different services that we need to offer to the city. We have police, we have fire departments, we have trash collection, we have public works, all these things that we need to offer, but where do we put the emphasis? And, and, and even in terms of IT services, where do we spend the most money? Which services do we spend the most time on, put the most resources on, spend the most money on? 
you know, in some cities, uh, for example, we'll, we'll have this inherent bias, right? Not necessarily a bad one, but you see a lot of cities where the mayor works more closely with, say, the commissioner of police than with other departments. That, that's not going to be the same in every city. Um, the other thing that you have to deal with at that level is that you have these people called uh, voters. Remember those? <laughs> they probably want us to get something done, too. And... Uh, and how do we know that what we're doing is in line with what the voters need? Think of them as our customers. Um, and even if it is in line, how do we show that to them in a way that makes sense to them? I mean, so often we hear voters say, well, we elected that guy or we elected that lady, but did they really get done what they said they wanted to get done? This is where like the strategic plan itself probably isn't good enough. It's very difficult to check off you know, a long strategic plan. Did you actually get that done? You may not get something done within the course of one term, but the implementation plan, you, you should be able to check off. I'm delivering some value over time. If you're talking about a lower level of the organization, so we're not talking about the mayor, or the city council or people like that. If you're just talking focused directly on IT, directly on the CIO or an IT department within a particular organization, I mean, wouldn't you say this is fair, Amanda? A lot of times it comes down to making a dollar stretch in ways it was not originally intended to do. Yeah, absolutely. <coughs> I mean, we're always asked to do more, and <coughs> typically we're not given more money in our budgets, if anything. Cuts a lot of times come out of our IT budgets. So um, you look at something like a strategic plan and think, Gosh, how am I going to continue to do everything I'm supposed to be doing in addition to making all of these new changes with this with the current resources that I have? And uh, and that's kind of the idea behind the implementation roadmap is hopefully what will happen is as you start to as you break down your long term objectives into smaller chunks, and you can see that, yes, we really can start accomplishing changes and making organizational changes, then hopefully your your life will, will be easier. Hopefully you're making changes that are going to uh, lessen the, the your everyday workload. Yeah, we hope so. I mean, the other thing that we see, um, we won't delve into it too much now, is the issue of governance, right? Mm -hmm. Making sure that all these different departments, police, fire, whoever, whoever those big... Um, those big areas are of our city or of our state that they're actually doing that what we want them to do in terms of strategic planning. Um, so we've seen a lot of that, especially at, at the municipal level, at the city level. Um, and we do have another webinar coming up uh, this year on that topic, specifically on governance. But um, for now, leave it at that. I think that, you know, we like to think that all of our departments are cooperating together, but it's more like coopetition, right? Yes. They cooperate sometimes because they need to. Um, but, there's competition for resources and for and for visibility, really. Yeah. And one thing that I think um, you want to avoid is not meeting your customers' needs and forcing them to go out and meet those needs elsewhere. So you don't want your police department or your fire department to hire somebody out of their own budget to help them with IT. Um, so... You want to you definitely want to balance, you know, what you can do with what your customers' needs are. Yeah, I mean, in situations where that happens, right, where the police department hires its own IT consultant and the fire department hires its own consultant and has its own staff, is that a lot of times you end up with redundant activities. You have two organizations within the same city or within the same state doing similar activities. They could have saved some money potentially by combining that. Sometimes they're doing things that are in direct conflict with each other. You don't want that as well. So although you probably do need some, you know, tailoring to each individual department, you do want some sort of governance where you have one basic approach. Yeah. One example that I know we, we see often is the idea of 24 seven support. Mm -hmm. So not every, um, not every group <coughs> may need uh, 24 seven support, but if your police department needs it and they have to hire somebody specifically to provide that and your fire department needs it and then they hire someone to provide that support, then just like David said, you now have a duplicate effort when you could just implement an on-call schedule within your regular IT department. 
Okay, let's move on to our <coughs> seven pillars of strategic doing. I just love that strategic doing. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to, I'd like to say that I invented that, but I'm not sure. I may have read it somewhere. <laughs> uh, but whether I invented it or whether I read it somewhere, I, I like it because this is the essence of why it, it essentially gets to the core of why strategic plans are often don't work very well and, and why so many scholars now are saying you shouldn't do strategic planning. Leaders spend too much time on strategy, you know, because it's strat strategy in a vacuum without actually getting it done is, is pretty much totally useless. Um, the, any number of phrases about this going back to the beginning of time, you know, the best, <laughs> the best laid plans, right, if you don't get them done. But <clears throat> the notion here is really to link strategic planning at a higher level with that implementation roadmap we talked about, you know, on the ground floor, on the day-to-day, -day, you know, let's, let's get these plans done level. And so we have our seven pillars of strategic doing. The notion here is that here are seven really big things to concentrate on to make that strategic plan, turn that into something that's really actionable. Let's start breaking these down. Our first pillar of strategic doing is making sure you have prioritized your plan. In order to kind of get the, the most bang for your buck when you're, when you're implementing something is to prioritize it. And uh, to, it just this is like the most basic way to prioritize is to take a look at what's important, what's urgent, where do they overlap, and that's what you should start with. Yeah, I mean, this is where we get into, you know, an organization will hire a consultant They'll have a hundred recommendations, but if you don't prioritize them, they're not all equally important. You may think they are, but at some level, you know, leadership of, of your city or of your state has to decide what are our top five, what are our top three, whatever that case is, and then hash that out and put it into a prioritized plan. What do we do next? And then the next pillar we have to talk about is making sure that you have measurable outcomes identified. So a measurable outcome, I mean, it's it's not really good enough to say, hey, we're moving in the right direction. Or um, just imagine that I made my New Year's resolution. I said I wanted to get into better shape. <laughs> that's not something that's easy to measure. If I said I want to lose 10 pounds, that is something that is measurable. I should be able to say with anything that that any part of our strategy, I should be able to say at the end of the day, did I achieve it or did I not achieve it? Absolutely. And uh, people often become afraid, I think, of measurement for, for two reasons. I mean, one is probably the biggest reason is because if you measure it, then you actually have to be accountable for doing it. Sadly, that is true most of the time. Um, you can always change your measurement. <laughs> but um, the second reason, too, is that sometimes people don't know how, organizations don't know how to measure success. They don't know, you know, where do we get started? What are the appropriate uh, measurements to take or the appropriate metrics to set? Yeah, and uh, we have whole classes devoted to talking about uh, more in more depth on, on measurements and how to measure. We also have a lot of tools on our website um, that go into some tips on, on how to select your metrics and how to figure out exactly what to measure. And, and I think a really good goal here is to, you know, don't shoot for the moon from the beginning. I mean, to the extent that you can, try to make um, what you're trying to achieve, try to make your goals and, and, and your measurable outcomes something that is a bit of a stretch for you, but it's not, you know, it's not really beyond your grasp. Start off easy. Start off with uh, with targets that are that are maybe not overly simplistic, but that are achievable and then get better from there. As you get better, as you become more mature, make the targets, you know, increasingly rigid or, or difficult to, to attain. Yeah. Um, definitely make sure you measure before you start your, uh, your roadmap, your implementation roadmap, because you definitely want to have a baseline measurement to, mm -hmm. to go back to. Um, you want to be able to, to say, we did all of these things and look what we look what our outcome was and there's really no way to show how much you've improved if you don't measure at the start mm -hmm. 
Now the other big one is ownership. So I love to go into uh, I love to go into organizations where they say something like this. But improvement is is part of everybody's job. It's imbued into <laughs> everybody's job. Um, that's why we don't have anybody who owns improvement or who 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 owns this notion of organizational change. And that's I mean I I get what they're trying to do, but that's basically a totally useless statement most of the times because if you don't have an owner um, of your strategic plan, if you don't have an owner of the different initiatives in your strategic plan, it just doesn't get done. Yeah. If you if you try to make everyone responsible, then ultimately no one's going to be responsible. To use the uh, to use the sports and workout analogies that I that I so loathe. Um, <laughs> They're pretty good, though. Um, you know, it, it can be helpful to have the coach or the personal trainer, somebody saying, you know, this is what we said we're going to do. Now, what are we doing on that? Let's get it done. Here's the direction to go and let's get moving. If you don't have that, it's so easy for people to just to just stay with what they're used to. I mean, that's that's what strategic planning really is all about, ultimately. Right. Like organizational change. Yes. And, and it's about changing behaviors, right? Changing the way people work. It's not so much about changing our systems or changing, you know, the amount of IT that we have or the particular hardware and software. That's part of it. But it's really fundamentally about changing the way people work. Because as you know, everybody loves change <laughs> when it affects somebody else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the... Changing, changing the way people do, changing the way people work is the hardest change to implement, which is why you, you can't overstress the amount that you, you really need to have an owner assigned to this so that you can actually see some progress. And it's, um, it, just, just to, uh, to clarify here, it's not about, um, it's not that everybody else in the organization, you know, has, has just abdicated responsibility for getting stuff done. It is just to say, though, that you have one person for the whole strategic plan, but one person per initiative who's really just driving it, who's making sure that other people are really taking it to heart and getting stuff done. When you get off track, making sure that you're getting back on track. That's what we're talking about here. Another really important um, pillar that... Uh, People usually uh, forget to, to take into account is financial alignment. And this is actually one of our one of our big areas of specialty, financial management. I mean, um, I mean, just look at this stat: sixty percent of organizations don't link strategy to budget. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, <laughs> I'm going to go out today and buy a Bentley. <laughs> I, I mean, if talk about being realistic, right? It, this, I, I mean, it, it's shocking, but then you think about how difficult this task must be, and then you think, well, maybe I understand why it's so difficult for folks to do. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's obviously, it's easier said than done to link it to the budget, but you know, a couple of things, a couple of the benefits of this, you know, at, at a simple level, if you can if you can do a better job of linking your goals where you want to be to how much money you have to actually do that, um, at a minimum, it helps finance whoever's controlling the coffers. It helps anybody else who has to do with that. It gives them a little bit more ownership of, of what you're doing. It makes people realize that... Um, that you know you don't have these you don't just have these pie in the sky ideas that you're being realistic about it and at the end of the day hopefully you get more and more of your strategy actually accomplished because you have the money to do it and this this is one that kind of makes this one um you know is one of the ones that really makes me sort of sort of angry when i see a lot of times we're brought in because a company or a municipality strategy has failed and it's often because somebody's prepared a plan for them that is totally unrealistic mm -hmm. that they wanted, you know, they wanted to do things that there was no way they could ever afford it, and uh, and and I think it's almost irresponsible to not consider the reality of the organization when you're doing planning. Yeah, and this is one that also goes really hand in hand with prioritizing. So if you are having issues with your budget, having that having your plan and your goals prioritized can really help your financial folks to get you the money that you really need. 
if you're on the ground floor of this, so so you know, not the city council mayor level, but if you're in the IT shop, you know, trying to map your goals, how your goals fit in with the overall city goals and the budget for that, do your best to try to use non-technical terms. Like your 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 mayor and city council and anybody else and your voters, they don't care about the hardware or the software that you have. You need that. You need to care about what those things are and why you would choose one server over another, why you would choose one piece of software over another, but they don't care about it. Talk about it really in terms of what that service is. What is that thing that IT does to support a big goal of the city? Yeah. Put it in, in terms that they can understand because you're much more likely to get the budget that you need when somebody understands what you're talking about. But if I see, I, I say I need X number of millions of dollars because I need to, I, I need, you know, to do a fleet replacement of, you know, a hundred servers or whatever. Yeah. Um, so what, like, why do you need that? What does that give me? That, that's what your customer needs to know. Yeah, that's a great tip. That's a great tip. Uh, okay, <clears throat> moving on to tactical alignment. Um, so, it, you know, this is kind of what we mentioned at the very beginning of the webinar. Um, you, you need to make sure that your operations folks are involved um, in, at, in some way, shape, or form in your strategic planning exercise. Um, at the very minimum, just make sure that they have the implementation roadmap in, to, to follow so they know um, exactly what they're going to be held accountable to as far as um, what, you, what you want to accomplish in your plan. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> does this mean if we do this right that we get Barbara Eden to, uh, to show up on our doorstep? Um, yeah, so I don't know about that, but <laughs> I, do, I do know that this isn't as easy as, as people may think it is. So we're not, <laughs> we're absolutely not trying to trivialize this. Um, but it's more than just blinking your, you know, blinking your eyes and saying, well, we did our strategic plan and now we can just sit back and watch it come to fruition. Yeah. I mean, as you see, 90% of organizations don't do such a good job of this. Um, you know, an, a non, a, a typical non IT example of, of failure to link strategy to tactics. I mean, in a lot of cities out there, there's this notion of like, you know, let's reduce, uh, let's reduce the rat population in the city. So it sounds like a good idea. Let's give everybody, you know, free trash cans, you know, great idea at a high level. But then you see in so many cities that it turns out that, that the trash cans were too big to fit into the alleyways of, of the people who own homes. <laughs> um, it turns out that, that at a tactical level, the, the, the folks collecting the trash, the sanitation workers, like, you know, they don't actually like to lift up the trash cans to put them on the back of the truck for the arm because it's too heavy. I mean, you really need to go farther than just saying, isn't this a great idea? You actually need to vet this a little bit with the people who are doing the work. The same in IT. You know, we could have a great plan of replacing our systems, of offering a new service to our customers. But until you ask the folks who are actually doing the work, I mean you know, it, it's not a realistic strategy until you do that. And that's kind of like, that's the second biggest thing that makes me angry when I see that somebody else has worked on a plan that, that it was a plan that was created, you know, in the cloud, so to speak, not, yeah. not in the clouds that I like, but it was created, <laughs> created somewhere else without any notion of how it could really get done. Yeah. And then what ends up happening when you, when you do that, it, typically, like you said, it'll just go <clears throat> on a shelf and start collecting dust. And in most organizations, um, like we said earlier, if you send this out to everybody, 95% of your workforce is probably going to ignore it. And then you're going to have everybody just running and running and running in their own directions. Yeah, I mean, if you truly want improvement to be part of everybody's job, they have to know what actually, what direction they should be going in, right? Exactly. Oh. We're missing one of the Beatles. <laughs> Is that Abbey Road? <laughs> uh, yeah, so the, the milestones and course corrections uh, are going to happen, right? Yeah, I mean, no, no realistic plan <laughs> stays the same, right? Exactly. Um, yeah, a couple of thoughts about this. I mean... You know, years ago when I first started to even be involved in strategy at all, the, the first plans I would see would be like these 10-year plans, right? 
Yeah. And then over time, those plans kind of became seven-year plans, and then they became five-year plans, and then they became three-year plans. Um, you may have you may have an actual legal reason, a reason within your within your city or state to do planning, you know, beyond five years. You may need to have a longer time horizon. But as you know, the longer you plan out into the future, the less certain those plans are. So what we see in in a lot of organizations, probably less so municipalities, but we see it there too, is that shorter time horizons for the strategic plan. Long term could be three, three to five years as opposed to seven to 10 years. Um, but the big thing here is that r regardless of what your time horizon is, your plan will need to change. Ideally, your strategic plan stays more or less stable, although even there, that might need to be tweaked as your needs change. But your implementation roadmap along the way, that's probably the one that you're looking more frequently at to say, hey, are we still on track? What do we need to do to, uh, to get back onto track or to change the, change the direction we're going in? And our last, uh, our last pillar, um, momentum and incremental improvement. So once you, once your improvements start, um, making sure that you can keep that momentum going, and um, make sure that it's really visible to everybody. Um, you may have, you may have accomplished something in your plan that was really big. Um, make sure you you communicate that with with your team yeah i mean i've seen um i've seen organizations spend a year or more doing a strategic plan so during the time that they're doing the planning the world hasn't stopped things keep <laughs> moving on um you know a lot of organizations they spend so much time and money and effort doing the strategic plan that they just get tired and they forget to implement it or they or they successfully in, in a good case they successfully get some things done but again they're so fatigued from it that they forget to move on you don't want to be like the person making the new year's resolution to go to the gym and the first two weeks you you, you uh you're sweating to the oldies but then by the end of the month the gyms are empty and and you have your clothes hanging on the treadmill that's not what you want to be organizationally um you know quite often the case is that you know people do the strategic plan it sits on the shelf and they never talk about it again yeah or they talk about it not enough yeah i mean most executive teams here spend you know what is it less than an hour per month discussing strategy now we're not talking about you know we're not suggesting here to redo your strategic plan every month we're talking about in everything that you do is that accomplishing something in our strategy go back to your implementation plan is the thing that we said that we're doing is how is that accomplishing something in our strategy and, and you could really drill this down to any level i mean it's hard it's hard to do this Maybe it doesn't work in every case, but I say even with employees, you know, come to your employee and review. How are you contributing ultimately to strategy? Now, granted, for large organizations, this is tough, but, you know, think along those lines. You know, are we everything that we're doing? Is it getting us to the next level or are we just doing something because we've always done it before? So. And Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say what we're really looking for is like continuous improvement, right? You don't have to be perfect from day one. In fact, that's probably not a good goal. Get a little bit better over time. Exactly. And to help us <coughs> to help us continually get better over time, um, we typically use the Deming cycle, which is very simple, um, four steps that you just continually repeat. Uh, so you plan based on what's in your strategic uh, what's in your strategic plan what's in your vision statement what are your what are your goals um, and then take that plan and execute it uh, check and measure to see if you actually got better and then take corrective action and try to keep that momentum going either um, with the same item or moving on to something new And the tactical execution roadmap is what's going to help you get from, from A to Z. That's the strangest tic-tac-toe board I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's what we're trying to do, right? A lot of organizations stop at the planning step, and they don't do the do, check, and act. Exactly. And that's where you're going to veer off track very quickly from, from the path that you have set in your strategic planning. So you really, 
strategic planning and execution, they need to uh, take the plunge and get married. Yeah, they, they should go, to, uh, to use a well-worn metaphor, they should go hand in hand. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about some helpful tools that you can get to kind of, that you can use to get started right away. So the these are these are tools that we uh, we talk about and we can help you with uh, the CSI model. Very similar with the Deming cycle that we just talked about is just continuing to improve, continuing to stay on that path. Um, strategic planning is also um, one of our popular service offerings where we do a two-day strategic planning workshop. Um, and you you know you can learn more about that from our website. Uh, we also perform maturity assessments. So if you are uh, getting ready to start a big process improvement initiative, um, a maturity assessment is going to help you with your baseline. So you'll know you'll be able to have uh, real measurements to see how your improvements worked. Yeah, and that's. Um... That's really key. Sometimes organizations, they kind of start with these assumptions of what they need to do with strategic planning without looking at their current environment. So it's, it's always a great idea to start with your, with your current processes. What does your current environment look like? And assess that. And that's really difficult to do on your own. You can do it to some extent, but it's really helpful to have a third party to come in to look at that, to be as objective as possible. Also, it, it takes some time, right? And you have to know the right questions to ask and how to ask them. Um, so the maturity assessment, I think, is really key. Some, now, a lot of times, you know generally where your problems are. You know generally where your pain points are. But it can help be helpful to, one, get some validation on that from a third party. It can also be helpful, though, to go a little bit deeper. Yeah, we know that we're not doing this area very well, but what about this could we be doing better? That's where um, where some expertise can, can come into play. Um, an improvement plan. So... Um, just having a strategy of where we're going probably isn't good enough. We talked about the uh, the implementation roadmap. If you're not ready to do full-blown strategic planning, you could also work on something smaller, an improvement plan. Take a few of the different key processes or key services that you work on in ITIL. Get those better. Maybe you have a notion that you're not doing the financial management with some of your services well. Take one or two of those services and do a truly a comprehensive costing initiative on those to get better. Um, and then one of the big tools that we've used a lot that, that really helps folks is this thing called the CSI register. And so, um, and I'd be interested to hear, uh, to hear what you have to think about this, Amanda, but I've seen the CSI register. It, it, it's such a nice tool because it can be very simple. You can make this as simple or as complicated as you want. CSI is, uh, it stands for Continual Service Improvement. It is a concept of, uh, of ITIL, which is a, a best practice framework for managing IT and delivering IT services. But the notion here is that, you know, you list out your improvement opportunities. Here are your here are my five or 10 improvement opportunities, then you prioritize them. Remember, priority is really key here. Establish an owner. If, if you don't have an owner, it doesn't get done. And keep it simple. Describe the initiative briefly. Is it small, medium, or large? What's the status? Has it not yet begun? Is it a work in progress? Is it nearing completion? Maybe you've finished it. Um, you could add in any number of fields. Sometimes for our clients, we do a whole workshop on offering something like this or give them a tool like this that we customize for them. So, you know, here are the, the different fields and even calculations that we want to include on here. But if, if you're just starting from scra scratch, keeping it simple can be can be a good thing. Have you seen uh, the clients you've worked with, have you seen them use this to good effect? Um, well, actually, um, not to brag, but <laughs> I'm just going to brag for a okay. minute. No, um, I was, when I was a CSI owner um, in, in the federal government, um, what I did was I put this register, and it's, it's nothing fancy. It's just a, a table or a spreadsheet. It's just a way to list out your, your efforts and to track them. I would put it on the bottom of every single um, huh. meeting agenda that I had with all my different teams. And 
you know, we have weekly meetings, we just put it on the bottom of the agenda. So it's right there in the forefront of everyone's minds. Um, it really helped to foster this idea that, uh, that improvement is happening all the time. So in a meeting, if someone brought up an idea, they would see it go right onto the register. Uh, and everyone realized it was more of a collaboration. Um, and when we, when we accomplished something, it was also right there. And it was an easy way to communicate our improvements and to communicate our progress. Yeah, or even, even make it the agenda, right? Add a notes column on here, make it the agenda. <laughs> I mean, at a minimum, you know, we've all probably had that, that guy or that or that gal in the back of the room who's, you know, every month comes to the meeting and says something like, you know, where are we with that thing that we talked about in the past? And everybody kind of looks at each other and is like, I don't know, we haven't talked about that. Where are we with that? And then it takes a bunch of time. And then finally you realize that, oh, wait a second, we said last month that we're putting that off until the third quarter or whatever. You know, just at a minimum, having a list of your opportunities and, and prioritizing them prevents that. Then when Jim, Jimbo raises his hand, where are we with that? It's number you know 13 on the list, and we decide not to do it this year. Thank you, Jim, for your support. <laughs> now we're going to move on. Uh, so before we run out of time, I want to make sure we get through our 10 tips for better strategic planning or better strategic doing. Uh, tips one through five. Uh, first tip, when developing strategy, keep your execution and implementation in mind. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, it's always a good idea to have some stakeholders from the side of your house that's actually doing the work in mind. So, again, we kind of mentioned it before, but a strategy without, you know, without a concern or notion of how you're practically practically going to implement it, what capabilities you have is kind of uh, is kind of useless. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And two, keep it simple. If you've never done this before, uh, you don't need to have a hundred page strategic plan. Uh, you want to keep it as simple as what makes sense for your organization. Yeah, I mean, there's there's always this notion that strategic planning, you know, you feel like you should walk into the room and put on a crown or something like that. And <laughs> I mean, probably the better approach is the other way. Like, keep it really simple. Could you could you give the elevator pitch on what your strategic plan is? That's a much better approach. I mean, the documentation might be slightly longer, but than than one than a one pager. But keep it as simple as possible. Yeah. Um, and then aligning your business strategy with your IT strategy. So as your as your customers' needs change, you need to. <coughs> be able to respond to those changes, um, whether it's with operations or with the strategy. Yeah, if, if, if you're in the on the IT end of, of, of this in municipal government, you know, often people, the first thing that they think of is like, how can this improvement, how can this thing help me out? That's probably not the question to ask. The better question to ask is, how can this help my boss out? Or how can this help, you know, the city as a whole out? Um, I mean, without getting too pie in the sky, that's the way to sell this. Like, because nobody cares about really your problems. People care about their problems and how you can help them solve their problems. That's where you want to be with this. And, and then also to make sure that, you know, that there's some basic alignment here that you, you could actually get the strategy done. You have enough people, you have enough money. Some of yeah. the things that we talked about before. Yeah, and to echo onto that, uh, number four, to keep your your time horizons as short as possible. Like you mentioned, um, a 10 year strategic plan uh, can be kind of daunting when you look at it. Yeah, I mean, you know, the problems that, that any any city municipal municipality faces are by their nature long term. You don't mm -hmm. solve some of these problems, you know, in one or two years. So you may need to do some financial planning, some level of planning out for 10 years or so. But what I would say is that in terms of writing up your plan, in terms of executing on it, keep those to the shorter time horizon, because that if nothing else, that that makes it much more likely that you'll actually achieve some of it. Yeah, and David, um, when we talk about number five, change incrementally, how often would you recommend that an organization reviews their strategic plan to make sure that it, it doesn't need to be adjusted? I would say that, that so if you take the implementation planning, the ongoing like execution of the strategic plan, it's going to depend on the organization. But I would say that for those, I would say 
every quarter take a look at it, but probably not any big changes, you know, or, or you know, every quarter, every six months, take a look at the implementation plan. For the strategic plan, I, I would go more along the lines of like six months to a year. Now, obviously, if something major changes, right, um, then you might need to adjust it, you know, on an ad hoc basis. But um, change over time, but but don't change every day is kind of the, finding the right balance can be tough, but, you know, you don't have to be perfect from the beginning. You don't have to get to perfect overnight. All right. So number six. This, uh, I mean, this really speaks to setting measurable goals, right? I mean, if you set if you set a goal that's too difficult to achieve, you never end up getting it done, and 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 you disappoint people. But you also want it to be concrete enough so that at the end of the day, you can say, did I reach it or did I not get there? You know, did I lose the ten pounds or did I not lose the ten pounds? Did I improve the system, you know, in, in a very measurable way or did I not? That's where we get into uh, smart smart metrics, meaning. Um, you know, they should be measurable, they should be attainable, they should be time bound over what time period are we going to do this. And then when we talk to measurement being simple, um, when you develop your metrics, when you develop the target that you're looking at, how are we actually going to know? Mm -hmm. You know, how are we actually going to know that we've actually achieved that target? Keep it as simple as possible, you know. And then um, make sure that you that you check your progress and measure against those targets. Yeah, measuring against the targets and then and then along with milestones communicating out your success. You know, a lot of times it's easier to it's easy to uh, talk about the failures, communicate your success, communicate where we're deviating, de deviating from the plan, but don't just put it on the wall and, and do nothing about it. Yeah. And make sure to um to use an implementation plan when when necessary um, that will really help you uh, on the tactical side yeah i mean stick to it as much as you can but but realize that sometimes you need to be flexible and to change your strategic and implementation plan and and at the end of the day right there's no harm in asking for help um absolutely you know this is not an easy thing to do um you know there are people with expertise who do this all the time who can help you to get better quicker. Yeah. And uh, to do that, we, we offer several courses that can really help with this, uh, as well as our strategic planning workshop. Uh, so we have uh, some some courses that would greatly help. Uh, our ITIL Foundations course, if you've never had that, is an excellent course. Uh, and then to dig deeper into measurements, we have our CSI course. And we also offer a course in service strategy uh, where we're going to talk more in detail about uh, the processes involved in setting your strategy. Uh, we also have a blog with several um, articles related to these topics. Um, and we have a CSI register template that you can download from our website. Uh, so now I'd like to turn it over to our audience to see what questions do you have? How can we help you right now? Now, David, it looks like we're actually running out of time here. Um, so if you all actually do have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. You have our contact information here on the last slide. Um, feel free to email us, call us, tweet at us, however you want to contact us. We'll be there um, to answer any questions you may have. Um, so that's about all the time we have for today. Uh, thanks, Amanda and David. Um, that was a really great discussion. I hope you all learned something or had have an actionable takeaway from today's presentation. Um, and good luck with all your future strategic planning uh, initiatives. Thank you. Great, thanks. All right, bye everyone. Have a great rest of your day.